Come on, put your hands together. I told all my troubles goodbye. Goodbye to each tear and each sigh. This world which I roam cannot be my home. I'm bound to the city in the sky. I walk and I talk with my Lord. I feast every day on His word. Heaven is near. I can't stay here. Goodbye, oh, goodbye. Why don't you weep for me when I'm gone? Cause I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last trumpet sound, my feet will stay on the ground. I'm gonna rise with the shout, gonna fly. Gonna meet my Lord in the sky. Heaven is near. I can't say here goodbye, oh goodbye. I won't have the blues anymore. When I step that cross to the shore, and I'll never pine, for I'll leave behind my heart aches and cares forevermore. A day, maybe two, then goodbye. Goodbye to each tear and each sigh. Heaven is near, I can't stay here. Goodbye, oh, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone? Cause I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last trumpet sound, my feet will stay on the ground. I'm gonna rise with the shout, gonna fly. Gonna meet my Lord in the sky. Heaven is near, I can't stay here. Goodbye, oh, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. Cause I won't have to leave here alone And when I hear that last trumpet sound My feet will stay on the ground I'm gonna ride with the shout, gonna fly Gonna meet my Lord in the sky Heaven is near, I can't stay here Goodbye, oh, goodbye Play it, brethren! All my troubles, goodbye, goodbye to each tear and each sigh. This world which I roam cannot be my home. I'm bound to that city in the sky. I walk and I talk, my Lord. I feast every day on His word. Heaven is near. I can't stay here. Goodbye, oh goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last trumpet sound, my feet will stay on the ground. I'm gonna rise with the shout, gonna fly. Gonna meet my Lord in the sky. Heaven is near, I can't stay here. Goodbye, oh, goodbye, 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 oh, goodbye. Woo! If you believe that, just wave goodbye. Goodbye. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now we're going to that meeting in the air. Glory to God. This is one of those get up and go songs. So you just get up and go. The meeting in the air. We got that in F, I believe. All right. Praise God. Oh, that sounds good to me. Oh, like Tim says, you got to pat your hand, pat your feet, clap your hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is going to be a 
I'll meet it in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. So let's sing and you will hear, never heard by mortal ears, it'll be glory, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one at the meeting in the air. Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ears, will be glorious, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one at the meeting in the air. Many things there will be missing at the meeting. For the mourners means you'll have no place at all. There will never be a sermon preached to sinners. For the sinner had refused to heed the call. There will be no mourning over your loved ones. There'll be no pleading for all the Hooray, you'll be welcome at the meeting in the air. Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ears, it'll be glorious, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one at the meeting in the air. Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in that hall beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ears. It'll be glorious, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one at the meeting in the end. If you're planning on be there, on being there, so I'm gonna be there. Amen. One more time, are you gonna be there? Amen. Faith in the Father. A minor. A faith in the Father. Faith in the Son. Faith in the Holy Ghost. Victories are won. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Faith in the Father and faith in the Son. Faith in the Holy Ghost. Victories are won. Tremble the center away. Faith in my Jesus. Can anything change? Faith when my spirit is discouraged and I'm weak. Faith. In my Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Faith to be happy when nothing seems right. Faith. Faith to believe that everything's going to be fine. I've got faith in the Father and faith in the Son. Faith in the Holy Ghost. Victories are won. Demons will 
will tremble the sinner away faith in my Jesus can anything change faith when the family is sick and in bed faith when the message comes your loved one is dead faith to be happy when nothing seems right faith faith to believe that everything's going to be right I've got faith in the Father oh yes and faith in the Son faith in the Holy Ghost victory is all won da, 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 da. demons will tremble the sinner away faith in my Jesus can anything change faith when my spirit is discouraged and I'm weak when the friends the ones that I really really trusted they turn against me and speak faith to be happy when I'm falsely accused faith in my Jesus when I'm sorely abused I've got faith in the Father and faith in the Son faith in the Holy Ghost victories are won demons will tremble the sinner away faith in my Jesus and in change I've got faith in the Father oh yes and faith in the Son faith in the Holy Ghost victories are won demons will tremble the sinner Jesus and anything and as my brother Gene Martin sang under the old gospel ten he's singing in heaven today oh faith 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 just a little bit of faith 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 just a little bit of faith a whole lot just use that little bit that you got faith 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 just a little bit of faith oh yes it's faith 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 just a little bit of faith 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 just a little bit of faith you don't need a whole lot just use that little bit that you got faith 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 help me sing the song come on oh it's faith Faith, faith, just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use that little bit that you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Hallelujah. For without faith you cannot please God how many want to please God well just use your faith oh it's faith 
Faith, faith, just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use that little bit that you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. I said it's faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use that little bit that you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Woo! And if I use my faith, let the Lord fight my battles. Well, victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine If I use my faith Let the Lord fight my battles Victory, victory shall be mine Oh, victory, victory shall be mine My, my Victory, victory shall be mine If I use my faith Let the Lord fight my battles Victory, victory shall be mine Oh, joy, joy, joy shall be mine Joy! Joy, joy, joy shall be mine If I use my faith Let the Lord fight my battles Joy, joy, joy shall be mine Well, healing, healing shall be mine Yay! Healing, healing shall be mine If I use my faith Let the Lord heal my body Healing, healing shall be mine Well, faith, faith, faith Just a little bit of faith Faith, faith, faith Just a little bit of faith You don't need a whole lot Just use that little bit that you got Faith, faith, faith Just a little bit of faith Clap your hands if you've got some faith here this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Give our musicians a God bless you. Thank God for anointed music. Amen. If I want to hear funeral music, I'll go to the funeral parlor. But if I want to hear deliverance music, I go to Victory Temple Church. Amen. You can be seated just for about 10 seconds. Give me just a little bit of that funeral music. Just just about, just not a whole lot. Can't stand a whole lot. Just just a little, just a touch. See if, it, see if this sounds familiar. Don't he look good? No, he looks dead to me. Why, and why do we tip? Are we afraid we're going to wake him up or something? That's enough. That's phew, phew, phew. Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Whoa, glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, give those musicians another God bless you.
love him, love him. J-E-S-U-S. Oh, yeah. Jesus. 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 J-E-S-U-S. I'm going to praise him, somebody. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, J-E-S-U-S, oh yeah, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, hey brother. like that's a dying breed. Amen. Hallelujah. Honey, if that don't start your fire, your wood's wet. Holy God, I was born in this type of music. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did, did anybody enjoy that? Did, did anybody? Mm. Now we're going to ordain these elders. These two men are going to hang around and we're going to pray over these elders. You can be seated if you can. If you can't, just keep on standing and keep on praising. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have a Bible, Numbers, the 11th chapter. Numbers, the 11th chapter and verse 16. How many brought your Bible with you? Amen. Don't be caught dead without the word. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. We're ordaining elders today, and I want to speak just a little bit about elders. And elders are like preachers. They are preachers. They have to be called of God. In Numbers, the 11th chapter, in verse 16, And the Lord said unto Moses, Who's speaking? The Lord is speaking, God speaking unto Moses. And he said, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people. I want you to get me seventy men, elders of Israel, the ones that you know to be elders of the people. In other words, the ones that you know that are qualified. Amen. Everybody's not an elder. Amen. Everybody's not a pastor. Amen. Everybody's not a singer. Amen. But even though you can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everybody's not called to be a pastor of a church. Everybody's not a prophet. Everybody's not an apostle. But these offices in the church, there are qualifications that people need to obtain the office of a pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist, elder in the church. And God said, I want you to get 70 men. Now there's, Moses is leading 3 million people out of the Egyptian bondage. And God said, I want, to get, I want you to get 70 out of these 3 million. So there's not going to be a whole lot of choose to choose a whole lot to choose from, rather. But every one of them are not qualified. I've had I've had men to get saved in this church, and the week later they said they called to preach, and a month later they want to be a bishop. It does not work that way. Did you know God trained Moses forty years on the backside of the desert, training him? To lead his people for 40 years? I don't know about Moses, but Pastor Woody Martin, I can't keep people dedicated for 40 days. And I'm not preaching to you unless I'm preaching to you. So he said, get 70 elders, we're going to read, officers over them, and bring them into the tabernacle, into the church of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. Amen. So what are these 70 elders supposed to do? Stand there with their leader, not cause problems. Amen. These 70 elders are going to stand there with you, Moses. Look at verse 17. And God said, and I will come down and talk with thee. Three times in this verse, God says, I will. You cannot make a stronger assertion in the English language than saying, I will. You can't get any stronger message than that, that I will. I'll be there. You can depend on me. I'll be there. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll be there. And when the time comes, nobody's there. Well, they broke their promise. But God's not a promise breaker. He's a promise keeper. He said in verse 17, I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, Moses, and will put it upon them, the 70, that they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, Moses, that thou hear it not, that thou bear it not thyself alone. Amen. Moses, you're not going to have to bear this burden alone because these 70 that are in the temple, these 70 elders that whom you know to be elders, they're going to help you bear the load and Moses, you're not going to bear the burden alone. Amen. Can I say this very candidly? I've been in the ministry over 50 years and the burden basket is never empty for a pastor. The burden basker, the burden basket is never empty. 
I had a woman this week with tears in her eyes pray for my 21-year-old daughter raised in church, and she says she's an atheist. I mean, I could see the detection, detecting her voice, her crying out for her child that her 21-year-old flesh says she don't believe in God. Psalms 14 and 1 says, The fool has said in his heart there is no God. But honey, when it comes to your house, when it comes to your children, when it comes to your grandchildren and your loved ones, it's a different story then. And Peggy and I, for days, I've been calling that girl's name out to the Lord. I asked her what her name, and I've called that name out. I said, God, get a hold of her. I said, this is Woody Martin talking, Lord, and I want you to get a hold of that girl. I'm not going to call her name here. I know God hears me when I pray. But that's a burden that that woman put over on the pastor and the pastor's carrying that burden. We take your prayer request seriously in this church. And God says, Moses, these 70, I'm going to come in and talk with you. You're not going to have to bear the burden alone. Moses, you got three million people. Now, all the ceremonial laws, the cleanliness laws, the food laws, the diet laws, all these laws that they had. And someone called the church the other day and said, they're keeping the, the Sabbath. There's no way in the, on the face of green, God's green earth that anybody could keep the Old Testament Sabbath. You couldn't even walk 50 paces on the Sabbath day. Don't get in your car and drive the church. If you're going to take Saturday as your Sabbath, don't get in your car and drive the church because you broke the Sabbath right there. Amen. Don't cook nothing on the Sabbath. You should, women should have said amen on that one. You, that's the reason. The 612 laws do's and don'ts that they had to keep. That's the reason Jesus came to the cross and he nailed those to the cross. He is our Sabbath now. We didn't have to bring a bullock in here this morning. We didn't have to bring the fruits of the field in here this morning. We brought ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Jesus is my Sabbath I don't wait till Saturday or Sunday or Monday to worship him. I worship him every day. So look what the Lord said to Moses. You'll not have to bear this alone. Let's look at verse uh, 24. Numbers 11, 24. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. This is what God says. And he gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them around about in the tabernacle. Now watch this. They're sitting there in the tabernacle. I'm going to call it Victory Temple Church. And they're, they're sitting there waiting. And all of a sudden, verse 25, and the Lord came down in a cloud. Shabakarabaka. The Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him. God can still talk. God doesn't have locked jaws. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. God's still talking. The church is far away from him. They can't hear him. Amen. How many remember years ago, right here in this church, the glory cloud of God came in here, and it was so thick you couldn't see two foot in front of you. I mean, the glory... The fact that somebody thought the church was on fire, they saw it looked like smoke. I got witnesses. It was the Shekinah glory of God that came in. He, he, even their kids what, didn't have their iPhones out that time. Didn't have their iPads out. Why? Because the anointing was captivating the audience. God, take us back to those days. 
I said, God, take us back to those days. And I believe we're going to see those days. God says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. I believe that the last day church is going to far surpass the church at Pentecost. We're not leaving here in retreat, backing up to the devil. Jesus is not coming back for a broken and dilapidated, lukewarm disease, witchcraft, cancerous church. But he's coming back for a glorious church. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. No spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. That's the kind of church Jesus is going to have. So he came down in the cloud, verse 25, and he spake. God spoke. And he took of the spirit that was upon him, that's from God, and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Revelation tells us the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I don't believe in no prophets today. Well, you don't believe in Jesus today then. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Acts 2 and 17, in the last days, God said he's going to pour out his spirit upon flesh, all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy in the last days. You think I'm going to support a six-foot icicle behind the pulpit that denies miracles, that denies the moving of God's spirit? You think I'll give them a dime of my money? No, 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 a thousand times no. Read. I'm going to come down. This is verse 25 in a cloud. God spoke and took of the spirit that was up on him and gave it. You know what God did? The anointing that was up on Moses, God put it on these 70 elders. And the anointing that's on Woody Martin and Victor Temple Church is going to come up on Elder Mickey Shelton and Elder Merrill Crudup. Paul said in Romans 1 and 12, the church at uh, Rome there, he said, I'm going to come to you. And he said, I'm going to impart unto you spiritual gifts. Well, how do you do that? The only, the only, uh, the only scriptures, the only remedy of receiving the gifts of the Spirit is by the laying on of hands. Hello? The transferable anointing of God. Why did Peter tell that man at the beautiful gate, get up and walk? When he touched him, he started walking. He transferred healing into that man's body. And these 70 elders, God said, I'm going to put my spirit upon them. My goodness, what would we have if we had 70 leaders in this nation of ours that were led by the spirit of God that would not make one move until God spoke to them? So they prophesied and did not cease. And the Pilkey, do you remember services in this church at 2 o'clock in the morning? June Hensley, you remember services after midnight, 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, casting out devils, people laying on the floor, casting out devils in the name of Jesus. Oh, but we've got to get everything done in an hour nowadays. You better not go over that one hour. My God, it'll be a stampede to the front doors because Shoney's got a special on chicken today. <laughs> be like a stampede. Or Walmart's got a special. Well, somebody got a special. Well, I got a special today. I got a Holy Ghost special. That's special. The Holy, the Holy Ghost is special. Somebody say special. So these 70, they started prophesying. Yeah, I said to thee, they just kept on prophesying and prophesying and prophesying and prophesying. Somebody told me one time, said, aren't you afraid that with people prophesying like they do at your church? Uh, that uh, uh, Aren't you afraid of wildfire? 
I said, I don't bother me. There's enough wet blankets around to smother it. <laughs> I'd rather have a little wildfire. There's no fire at all. <laughs> Amen. And I'm the pastor. I got enough discernment to know who's right and who's wrong. I haven't been doing this for 50 years for nothing. So they kept on prophesying. And two men in the camp, Eldad and Medad, they went to Pastor Moses, tell, tell them to, they're, they're just prophesying and prophesying. Tell them to stop. You've always got watchdogs in the church. But they can tell you everybody's faults in the church and everything that goes wrong. The song was too loud. It was too low. It was too cold. It was too hot. I wasn't comfortable. I had to go to the bathroom five times. Well, quit taking those water pills before you come to church. Moses, Pastor Moses, uh, now, I don't want to make nobody mad, but Eldad and me, Dad, they're just prophesying over there. Why don't you stop them? Why don't you stop them? And I like, I could quote it, but I'm going to read it to you. Verse 26. There remained two of the men in the camp. The names of one was Eldad, and the name of the other was me, Dad. And the Spirit rested upon them. The Spirit rested upon them. The Spirit rested upon them. My God, we've had, we've had people here in this church go out on the Spirit, had to haul them out to the cars, out in the Spirit. My sister's 85 years old. She's sitting over here on the right. And Granddaddy Smith and Grandma Barry, well, they, they was the first ones to receive the Holy Ghost in the early 1900s. And they said, Grandma Barry said, she's so happy, she don't even know what she's talking about. She's speaking in tongues. But they knew it was good because she ha, 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 she's talking in tongues. And they told me stories that they had tried to haul them, put them in the back of a buckboard and haul them home by a horse and buckboard. Falling out in the spirit. And the Bible says the spirit rested upon them. God let the spirit rest on Victory Temple. God let the spirit rest upon Woody Martin. God let the spirit rest on this congregation. I, I'm here to worship God. I'm here to praise God. And he told me, Woody Martin, whatsoever you ask, in my name I'll give it. He said, you ask in my name. He's not asking for me. I've got to ask him in the name of Jesus. What I ask. If you don't ask, you don't receive. Therefore I say to you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, doubt not in your heart, it will obey you. What you ask in his name. But the key to that is if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask. Then you can ask what you will and it will be done. And there's no need for you to ask for some other man's woman. Moving right along. So Eldad and Medak kept on prophesying and the pastor Moses, I love his reply. Verse 28, they, they kept on prophesying. Verse 27, Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, and of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. Verse 29, Moses said, Envious thou for my sake? Question. Then he says, Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets? Would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets. Would to God that everybody in Victor Temple would prophesy. 1 Corinthians 14 and 31 says, You may all prophesy one by one. How many of them? All of them. One by one. Prophecy is the most neglected neglected gift in the body of Christ because it's the one that's used, the, it's one of the vocal gifts. It used the tongue. James says this tongue is an unruly member. Sometimes your tongue starts speaking before your brain goes in operation. And you walk around with hoof and mouth disease sticking your foot in your mouth. 
Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets. Merle Crew, seven or eight years ago, spent all his adult life in sin until he met Jesus. Eight years, y'all been here eight years? Nine years, eight years? He's been saved about eight, maybe eight and a half years. And how many times I've heard his family members, his sisters, nieces, pray for Merle, pray for Uncle Merle, pray that Merle gets saved. And him over there drinking beer, getting high, and probably laughing about it. Bound by witchcraft. Thank God for those family members, the Kuda family that prayed for him. And there's others that we need to pray in here as well. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And today, I, 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 in the office, I walked by that phone and I hear Merle. When I told him, we prayed for him, I told him, I said, you shall not die but live and you will declare the works of God. I'm walking by the prayer room. I hear Merle casting out devils. I hear Merle praising the Lord. I hear Merle saying, God did it for me. He'll do it for you. And he's leading people to the Lord and he's sharing with them the works of the Lord and what God, only God could do that. And one of our evangelists, Merrill, was standing back there with Willie one night, and the evangelist pointed his hand at Merrill, said, You're a reverend. Merrill said, No, I'm not. He said, Well, you're going to be. Amen. Scared the life out of him. When a prophet, when Bishop Dren or David Martin or Teresa Davis or Woody Martin, when a, someone under the anointing of God speaks to you under the anointing, that's not that person speaking. That's God speaking directly to you. That's the anointing of God that's coming into your life. Receive what they say. That's the reason God says, believe his prophets and you would prosper. My God, preachers have took that one and wore it out on finances. But there's more to life than money. Amen. You being in good health Amen. is worth how many, how many thousands of dollars? My wife and I wake up every day. It's been years, over 20 years. I can't remember when she or I even had a headache. Amen. It's a good feeling to wake up feeling good. Amen. It's a good feeling to wake up Amen. when you consider the alternative. Would to God that all the Lord's prophets, all the Lord's people were prophets. I've got June Hensley there and Edna Pilk and some of these others that's been with me almost since we started. I mean, had to carry people to their cars Amen. drunk on the Holy Ghost. Had to get designated drivers. Not drunk on alcohol, but drunk on white dove, drunk on the Spirit. Moses said, would to God, imbecile for my sake, I would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets. I reiterate, I'm not going to waste my time watching somebody on television trying to explain away miracles. Amen. Trying to explain away what God no longer does. When he says he's the same, Yesterday, today, and forever. Moses, verse 30. Let me read verse 20. Can I take my time? I know we got to ordain these guys, these brethren. If anything gets my wife, when we go to a restaurant and a lady comes up, how you guys doing? My wife says, I'm not a guy. I'm a woman. I'm not a guy. And after today, I want to refer to Mickey Sheldon as Elder Mickey. Amen. Merle Crudup as Elder Merle. Amen. Natalie calls him Uncle Earl. If you can't say Merle sometimes, she calls him Uncle Earl. Amen. Well, that's all right for her. Amen. Show these men the respect in the house of the Lord. 
Verse 29, Moses said unto them, In this hour for my sake, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and the Lord put his spirit upon them. So we're ordaining these elders today. And did you know the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1 that by faith the elders obtained a good report. How did they do that? By faith. Did you know James 5 and 13 and 14, the Bible says if a person is sick, First, you're supposed to pray for yourself. Yes. If you can't get the victory after you pray for yourself, call for the elders. who? Elders. Call for who? Elders. You know, there's probably not, I don't know how many churches in Loudoun County, but there's probably not a hundred churches or less in Loudoun County that pray and anoint people when they get sick. Why? Because they don't believe in it. You want to attend a church like that? I, I know we get wild here, but we get wild for Jesus. I'm not ashamed of what goes on at Victor Temple Church. Years ago, we had the mayor of this city. He said, and after he spoke, when we burned the note and paid everything off in 21 months, paid this place off and bought and paid for it in 21 months, paid it off. Almost fifty thousand dollars. That was in uh, seventy four, seventy six. Got pictures where we burned the church note. And Mayor Evans said, "Ah, preachers, I, I'll tell you one thing. You got a lively bunch." I said, "We got a Holy Ghost filled bunch, Mayor. Not a, I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed of what goes on at Victory Temple Church. Did you hear me? I'm not ashamed of my type of worship." I'm not ashamed of what God does around here. I'm not ashamed when God fills people with the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed when God opens somebody's blinded eye and gives them a miracle. And you better believe one preacher said, he just puts it all over, splashes it all over TV. You know the reason he don't splash it all over his TV screen? Because he's not getting no miracles. That's the reason. You better believe I'm going to put it all over the TV. Shout it from the housetop. Shout it as loud as I can. God spoke to him. I'm going to go back to June 1974. This little girl, the first blind person received her sight. About a few weeks later, a few months later, Helen Long. We got footage on Helen Long. She's testifying how Jesus, after two eye operations, God, they removed the lens from her eyes. God gave her two creative miracles in her eyes and she could see out of those eyes that they took the lens out of them. Dr. Thomas Cost was standing right here and he testified about it. What God did. I'm thankful for that. Miracles are my passion. When these elders sit in this seat after a while, I'm going to impart my anointing and Bishop Drennan and David Martin, we're going to impart the anointing that's on us, on them, and they're going to do the same works that we're doing that we don't have to bear it alone. Titus 1 and verse 5, when Paul left uh, Titus in charge at Crete, he left a young preacher there, he said him, and the Bible says he set things in order and in ordained elders in every city. Somebody say every city. So eldership is important. We've got to have leaders in the church. Can I give you two more scriptures? I'm going to anyway. Go with me to Revelation 4 and 4. Somebody say, thank God for the word. Say it again, thank God for the word. Revelations 4 and 4, are you there? If you can't find Genesis and Revelations, you probably need more help than what I can give you. Revelation, 4th chapter, verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon
upon the seats I saw four and twenty what? What were they doing? Sitting. And they were clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Shata. I'm going to say crowns of gold. Ain't nothing cheap about my God. Gold's going to be so cheap in heaven, we're going to walk on it. Now these four, 24 elders, four and 20 elders that were sitting and they had crowns of gold on their head. But then the scene changes over here in Revelations, uh, uh, I have to turn the page, Revelations 5, and uh, let's look at, I'm trying to hurry. God help me, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let, let's look at Revelations 11, 12, and uh, 14. Revelations 5, 11, 12. And I beheld and I heard a voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was what? You know how many that is? That's a bunch of them. That's a lot of them. So it went from 24 elders to the number of 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And here's what these elders did. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy! Worthy! They didn't have no microphone, but they said with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb! Can I prophesy to you people don't believe in shouting? This is the quietest world you're going to live in. If shouting bothers you, you better unpack your bags and not go to heaven. Oh, we're reserved. Yeah, you're reserved, all right. You're six feet under reserved. You're so reserved, you're dead. It amazes me that people can go to NASCAR and ball games and catch big fish and political rallies and shout and scream until they lose their voice. But if you do that for Jesus, oh, they're fanatical. You better believe I'm a, a fan, I'm a fan of Jesus. I am a fanatic. I'm a fan of Jesus. So here we got thousands of people, and they're saying with a loud voice. Somebody say a loud voice. Everybody say as loud as you can, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, ten thousands, worthy is the Lamb. Shh, 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 shh. Don't you shush me. Don't you try to shush me. I'm going to praise him. Mm. Verse 12, Son of thy voice is worthy of the Lamb, slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, and honor and glory, and blessings. Now they go back, verse 14, they go back to the four. The four and twenty elders. Twenty-four. Watch this. And the four beasts said, Amen. So be it. And the four and the twenty elders fell down and worshipped Jesus that liveth forever and forever. Sad note. The four and twenty elders didn't kneel down. They didn't sit down. The Bible says they fell down. I believe it's uncontrollable. Just fell out in the spirit and worshiped him and said, worthy is he. Worthy is the lamb. Amen. I'm going to ask these two candidates to come at this time and take these seats here in the front. I'm going to ask Bishop Drennan and uh, Pastor David to come to assist me. And I forget where these people are from, Indiana. Thank you for being here today. God bless you. We love you. I'll pray for you after we get through here in just a moment. Everybody needs prayer. Hallelujah. This is very important what we're doing here today. This is recorded in the antles of heaven. 
I know both of these men. Amen. Just get you a seat there, brethren. If, if for no other reason, having this ordination day, we finally got Mickey in a suit. Elder Mickey. And a tie. And a tie. And a <laughs> yellow tie. You know, yes. Sure, glory to God, I love that. And look at his matching wife over there. Got to, amen. Go ahead and be seated, brethren. Why do you want to be an elder? God said for it to be. He told my wife years ago, and he told me when I came to church here, if the pastor up here on this pulpit said, welcome, Reverend, and I looked around and kept looking, he said, no, I'm talking to you. I said, oh. <laughs> what was the date, Teresa, you got the date in your mind when God woke you up out of a deep sleep? April the 20th, 2010, God woke Teresa up from sleeping and said these words, the one you're with now will preach the word of God. And that's Merle. 2010. That's over, this 2017. Steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. <laughs> I highly recommend both of these men. I know their lives. They're good men. Number one, they love God. Amen. Amen. Bishop, would you come? And I'm going to have Bishop to pray, and then David's going to pray, and then I'm, we're just going to cover them with prayer. Hallelujah. And Bishop's going to have to step out here in just a moment. I'm so thankful for his dedication to this church. He's got a church in, in Philadelphia. He leaves here and goes to his 2 o'clock service. Amen. That's the reason I have to hurry sometimes. Some of you want me to take my time, take my time. Well, uh, everybody can say take your time. So, uh, but he is so versatile, Bishop I'm talking about. You heard him play that organ this morning. He's a, a par excellent preacher of the word, a gifted man of God, and God's put us together. Amen. Amen. Just say what you want to, brother, and we'll pray. Brethren, let me read uh, just one uh, verse of scripture here uh, before we pray. Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning of verse number 1, he said, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering." and forbearing one another in love. This is your charge. He said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Then Paul goes on to write to the church at Ephesus, and he said, there is one body, one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Some of the most powerful words in the New Testament. It's the charge of those who have been chosen by God to fulfill the calling of an elder and a leader uh, Paul spoke to Timothy, who was a young pastor, and he told him uh, very simple things like study to show yourself approved, a workman unto God that needeth not be ashamed, who rightly divides the word of truth. He admonished Timothy to reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The greatest commission upon your life as elders is to serve God in the beauty of holiness in such a way that not that it pushes people away from God, but it will draw people together in the love of God. Your calling, your election, and this is powerful, you're the elect seed of God. 
The, the, the ideal of election means that God trusts you so much in the position that he is calling you to that he literally went to the polls and cast his personal vote for you to elect you to this place. That you would be able to help bring unity and love and the bonds of brotherhood to the body of Christ. Amen? And I do not believe that there's any two more capable men to achieve this result in this body than Elder Merle Crudup and Elder Mickey Sheldon. They have proven their commitment. They have proven their dedication. And they have made... See, this is something that we forget. Paul told Timothy to make full proof of your ministry. That's where a lot of people falter and fail is that there's no proof of their ministry. They're all talk, but no action. And you men have served in a, in a role of dedication. You men have served wholeheartedly here at the foot of your pastor, helping hold his hands and the truth is, great victories are won by your pastor and your leader because he has you by his side, holding his hands. This is our Moses. You're his Aaron and her. And the victory's won not just because of Moses, but because he has great men by his side like you. And so today, will you lift your hands, men of God? Today we anoint you and we commission you by the authority of the word of God that you step forward into your election, into your calling, into the admonition of your life's work. And we decree and we declare upon you today the wisdom of God, the mercies of God, the power of God, the anointing of the Lord. We stir up the gifts that are in you today by the laying on of hands. And Lord Jesus, as we pray this prayer of faith over our elders today, we pray that in every area of their life that they'll walk circumspectly in their deportment before all men, that they'll be faithful and honest representatives of the hope and grace of their calling. In Jesus' name today, we declare over them that the presence of God shall pervade from every area of their life, that they'll walk in knowledge, that they'll walk in the very essence of your presence, oh God. In the name of Jesus, let this stirring, Lord, be perpetual in their life. Lord, let everywhere that their foot trods be anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus today, we declare the anointing of God released upon them to fulfill their calling. In Christ's name, in Christ's name, in Christ. Oh, yes, Lord. My God, I feel your presence, Lord. Thank you for the work that you are doing in these brethren's life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the church say, Yes, Lord. Pastor David's going to come and say a few words and pray, and I want him to read the ordination certificates that we're bestowing upon these men. Now, when the scripture says, lay hands suddenly on no man, that's not, not talking about a prayer line when you're praying for people that's sick. It means those in authority, those in office of the church. Don't lay, don't put a novice in the office is what Paul's saying. Don't put somebody in there that doesn't know what they're doing. And I believe these men know what they're doing. And I said again, they received my highest endorsement. And we thank God for them. And thank God for Pastor David. He's going to come and uh, we're going to present them with these ordination certificates. And then I'm going to pray and then uh, we're going to do something else. Amen. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, men, for answering the call and being willing to serve. Uh, and there's a difference. Many are called, fewer chosen. Um, 
And how many would agree, I think we would all agree this morning, you know, if you look at the Old Testament, people were very quick to see that the prophet was always taken care of. The reason that they were so quick to ensure the prophet was taken care of because they knew that their blessing came from the prophet. And if they could make sure and see that he was blessed, then that was a guarantee that they would be blessed. There was no selfishness, there was no greed, there was no, oh, he's getting ahead of me. They made sure the man of God was taken care of because if the man of God was taken care of, that meant they were going to be taken care of. If they saw to it that the man of God was provided for, God was going to see to it that they were provided for. And that's how that covenant works. So there is such a significance there. To take that a step further, and Bishop touched on it, Moses had two men called, or two, two uh, elders, Aaron and Hur, that played a significant, significant role in that congregation and in that church and in that ministry. The Bible was so specific that it said that Moses went to the mountaintop to pray. He sent the other congregation down to fight. There's some irony there. And thank God that they knew how to follow authority in those days. In this day and time, there would be the temptation for congregations to argue, well, who do you think you are? Let me go and pray and you go fight. But they didn't do it that way. They knew that their man of God needed to be there interceding on their behalf. But he took two with him. And the Bible was so specific that it said, as long as Moses was praying, they were winning the battle against the Amalekites. But how many know you can't constantly get up every day and just be full of faith and on fire and ready to go? You need a supporting system to help you so that the enemy doesn't fight and drain you from the anointing that God has bestowed upon you. we got to have help. you got to have support. It takes a united family. And so when Moses would get tired, the Bible said that his elders would physically hold his hands up yes, for him. Yes, hallelujah. That in the event that Moses didn't physically, he was not able to carry on, they physically propped him up because they knew the power was in the interceding and in the prayer. If they could keep him interceding, they could keep the victory. Oh, yeah. If they could keep him prayed up, they could keep on winning the battle. They could defeat the battle. They could defeat the enemy. They could defeat the sickness, the disease, the impoverished nation. They could overcome any obstacle as long as they kept him propped up. Had Moses not have had them, I think the script would have ended differently. Because see, it, it takes more than one. Jesus, of all people, had the likes of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I mean, we could, we could go name it on. And even had women at the tomb waiting for him when he got up. It wasn't just men there. There was women there to carry that message when he rose up. So the significance of what these men have accepted to do is astronomical. It's huge in the kingdom of God. It's nothing to take lightly. It is something that you should put thoughtful consideration to before you say. It's not a title. It's not just a title on a business card. This is in the trenches of battle, of winning this fight in the kingdom of God. And last but not least, the Bible talks about that it's such an honorable thing. And, and, and what that simply means is that it's an honor to walk in that leadership role. One thing I like about these two men, and, we, and God has blessed us with so many people like this, leadership doesn't mean that you're the boss. Leadership means you're willing to do anything. 
It, if it's carrying out trash, a cleaning a toilet, staying late, coming in early, doesn't matter what it is, a true leader is at the front of the line yes. helping pull that wagon. And that's what, when I see these, not only, when I see these two men, not only do I, do I see the, 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 the anointing and the love of God on them, but I see a willingness to do anything of whatever it takes here in the kingdom of God. So as you step into this role that the Bible calls an honorable role, yes. what that really means is God says that when you speak, when you speak, yeah. your words carry weight with him. Yeah. Can we pause for a moment and just think about that? That when you call things out to the Lord, when you petition God, when you intercede on the behalf of other people, God says that your words mean something to him. When Bishop cries out to the Lord at 2 p.m. this afternoon in Philadelphia, it's not just a gathering to hang out because he has nothing else to do. The Bible says that what he has to say bears significance with God. That if he has something, or Elder Merle or Elder Mickey has something on their heart, that that petition carries weight with him. That's why when you hear your leaders calling your name out to the Lord, it should excite you because that tells me that God is getting ready to do something on your behalf because of who was asking. My goodness, good Lord, in this place. So I would, I would, I would tell you with confidence today that today is, is a day, a new beginning, a, a, a fresh, clean, new beginning that... When you go to the throne room, the words that you bring to God carry weight with those words. Be careful what you ask for. Because when you ask for it, he's going to do it. Because that's what comes with the significance of that honor that God has bestowed upon us. Let me read this very quickly. This certifies that Mickey Sheldon, having responded to the call of God to Christian ministry, and having satisfied all the biblical requirements for ordination as elder, we, the ordination council, have given careful examination as to the moral character, the soundness of doctrine, and leadership qualifications of this person for the work of the ministry. We do hereby award this certificate to none other than Mickey Sheldon. I'm going to both place these in your hand. And then we will, um, actually you can leave that original in there, and, yes. and there's a, an additional copy as well. And at the end, I'll pray over both of you and turn it back over to uh, the senior pastor. This uh, the, does certify that Merle Crudup Jr., I got to be honest, I didn't know if I'd ever be saying that or not. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that we are. I mean, look at God. The, the, this certifies that, Merle, I'm going to say that again. This certifies that Merle Crudup Jr., having responded to the call of God to Christian, Christian ministry and having satisfied all the biblical requirements for ordination as elder, we, the ordination council, having given careful examination as to the moral character, soundness of doctrine, and leadership qualifications of this person for the work of the ministry, do hereby and award their certificate as Elder Merle Crudup, Jr. Give them a hand clap of praise, if you will. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I lay my hands on Elder Merle and Elder Mickey. God, I thank you, Lord, for this life that they've given back to you. God, I thank you that they have answered this call to serve you in everything that they do. God, the anointing that you have placed on their life, Father, I decree that it will burn stronger, burn higher than it's ever burned before, Lord God. Lord, that you begin to give them wisdom how to fulfill their calling, knowledge and understanding how to deal with the loss, Lord God. Lord, that their ears would be fine-tuned to your voice, God, that they would walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, Lord God. 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, the power that you said is in them, that Bishop talked about, God. We stir up those gifts today. We stir up that spirit today, Lord God. Lord, that you would anoint their lips, Father, that fruit would roll off their lips, God, straight out of the word of God, like manna from heaven, that it would be water to the thirsty, food to the hungry. God will never cease to give you praise for everything that they do. Lord, every soul that they're going to win, every body that's going to be healed, every life that's going to be changed, every marriage that's going to be restored, Lord God, every ministry that's going to flourish, every seed that's going to get watered, Father, every harvest, every grain, every stalk of corn, Lord God, that's going to come out of the ground as a result of the prayers that these men are going to throw up, Father. We thank you today. We give you praise today. We honor you today, Lord God, in Jesus' holy name. And everybody said amen. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap today. And as being the leader, the Moses of this church and the pastor of this church, the anointing that's upon Pastor Prophet Woody Martin, I decree that it'll be on these elders, Lord. The wisdom that you've given me, I want you to open their understanding and give them wisdom. I pray for my anointing and a double portion of the spirit of the living God come upon them. Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and we speak that in this day forward we're publicly endorsing their ministries. Now we're giving them to go ye into all the world and minister that word of God to the people. We thank you, God, for this highly anointed time, this day, that we've taken this opportunity to anoint these men and give them the charge to go and preach and minister your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you men stand at this time? Now what we're going to do, just hold your certificates over your chest there and let them get a good picture of that. Amen. Glory to God. S some people are going to have to slip out. But I want to pray. I want to do something a little bit different. We're going to come around and shake their hand yes, and welcome them into the eldership that not Woody Martin, but that God has placed them in. Yes, Hallelujah. And everybody on this section, if you need prayer, don't leave. Just come around and shake their hands and then come back around and line up because I'm going to pray for about... 10, 15 people, and I know others have to leave, and I understand that, but uh, I want you to start over here on this side, come and let's give them the right hand of fellowship, and let them know that we love them, and we're going to pray for them by your shaking their hand, that signifies, come ahead, come ahead, that signifies that you love them, and you're going to pray for them, and lift them up before the Lord. Never thought you'd see this day, did you? <laughs> I love you. That's brother and sister there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> His family was the first ones that called over 40 years ago and wanted to know if black folks could come to this church over 40 years ago. And this is his sister. Oh, boy, isn't that precious? There's Miss Natalie. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank God for fellowship. Thank God for women and men and women that love the Lord and love each other. Amen. Good to have Brother John with us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, save the best for last, it looks like. I, I married this couple eight years ago right here in this church because I, it was God's will. They asked me, and I said, it's God's will for you to be married, and I married them right here in this church. I love you, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. I tell you, just hug somebody. If if it's a man's wife, say, "Can I hug your wife?" Just get permission. 
that hug somebody. Amen. Love you, brother. Chairs back up there. Amen. God bless you. Oh, this, here comes Sister Lois. Hallelujah. Now that you that over here on the right, if you need prayer, I want you to come up here. And we're going to pray for you. And if you're going to leave, please leave your tithe and your offering here before you leave. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now these men, anytime that you need prayer or assistance, you, you can call on them, and they'll be there for you. They want to help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come here a minute, Leroy. How long you been here? I don't know, but I guess about 20 years. 20 years. And we went to the hospital in Harriman and prayed for him. And God healed him, and he's been in this church ever since. Somebody say, look at God. One of the most faithful men that we have here in the church. One of the maintenance, taking care of the lawn, beautifying our lawn and keeping the grounds clean. We thank the Lord for Leroy. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Leroy, I should say. And Tim sitting up there on that camera. He's done some work for us this week. Maintenance here at the church. Doesn't charge us. And uh, we appreciate that. See, we're all working for the glory of God. If you need a tithing envelope... Lift up your hand. The ushers will give you an envelope. You can pay your tithe. If you're making a check, you can make it payable to Victory Temple. I want to pray for this couple from Indiana. Uh, I forget the name of the city. Would you, the couple from Indiana, I don't even know who you are, but God does. Hallelujah. And anybody else over here in that section that needs prayer, I want you to come. Come up here. Just come up here. Hallelujah. Anybody in that? Anybody else that need prayer? I'm, I'm going to be through here in less than ten minutes, but we're not going to drag it out for thirty. Just get to pray for you. In ten minutes, we're going to be finished here. If you need prayer, I want you to come and stand right here today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Stand right there. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Give them away pens. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Where are y'all from? You said Indiana? Or at yeah, Crothersville, Indiana. Say that slowly. Crothersville, Cr Indiana. Crothersville. Crothersville. That's not next to Merville, I don't think. <laughs> hallelujah. But I'm so glad. Did you see us on television? Direct TV. Direct TV. All right. Praise God. See that TV? <laughs> Hallelujah. When I look at you, I know you've got your, your Indian. But does your name start with a D? Is it Daniel? Whoa. Huh? Hallelujah. Yes, sir. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you play an instrument other than the drums? You play the drums on. We don't. We don't want to get you on the war path around here if you're Indian now. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. But the Lord, His hand is upon you. The hand of the Lord. It was God's will that you come to this service today. And God says the hurt of the past, the rejection that you have suffered in the past, and you're like Daniel in the Bible in that. When Daniel prayed, and you said your name was? Daniel. Daniel prayed, and it was 21 days before he got his answer. Yes. Because Satan withstood the answer from God. Satan kept the answer from getting back to Daniel. But Daniel was faithful in those 21 days that he prayed and he sought God. And I'm here to tell you, Daniel... And you can mark your calendar today, 21 days from this day, 
that which you have before the Lord, petition before the Lord, God's gonna bring it to pass, Amen. saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I anoint you in the name of Jesus. Shati roboto landarama. You shall be a strong man. You shall be strong and mighty in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Move, Lord, for Daniel. As a prophet of God, I speak these 21 days. Lord God, even finances. Shati rambada bokoria bakaya. Hallelujah. Shall be manifested. And God said he's going to make you the head and not the tail. And the rejection, the rejection will not be rejected no more. You will be accepted for who you are and what you are. And I break witchcraft that's been upon you all these years in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty. You receive that? Yes, sir. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand right here. Seemed like about a year ago, your heart was crushed. You lost someone. Uh, looks like your mother. Yes. Like in, about a year in February sometime. Huh? February 20th. Oh, glory. And she was your prayer partner. She was your real buddy. I mean, not only your daughter, but when you were born, she had difficulty in birthing you. And the reason that there's a difficulty in birthing because you are ordained of the Lord. You are going to be a prophetess of God. Mm. Am I talking to you yet? Oh, Hallelujah. And I see, I see when uh, there's times that when you really just want to get along with God, you got a private place that you pray and read but I, I see you on a porch or a swing, just swinging on a front porch, talking to the Lord. Praise the Lord, yes. You, yes. You we that. just turned my porch into a prayer room. I said, I know you pray. Mm. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, there has been in the last few months a shifting of the Spirit. God has shifted you. And you've tried to reach out to people and to minister and preach to them. And most of them have rejected it. But God said, but God said, this day, the anointing that I prayed over these elders is going to come up on you. Hallelujah. Shana Ramamakai. Yeah, Lord. Somebody have a praise God. Whoa. Mm. And I see you praying for somebody named Denzel. Denzel. Oh, that's my son. Hallelujah. My son. Oh, Rabbi, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And somebody named Chris. Christopher. Yes, that's my nephew I've been raising. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Sister Martin, can I borrow it? Do you, you have $100 that I can borrow from you? This is going to be twofold. You see, the, the Lord is in this, folks. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your ministry, and you are called of God. And the Lord told me to give you $100. Now, this $100 is for your ministry to jump start your ministry. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this hundred dollars is going to be like a magnet. And uh, I see a cash register like you're at a cash register. I don't know where you work. But uh, God says it's going to be a full-time ministry. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I work at Circle K, and I've been praying because I know God had called me out. <laughs> Do you, you work the register at Circle K? Circle K. Oh, okay. I guess I'm right about that one then. But God says you're not going to have to work there no more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because it's been your heart's desire to work for the Lord full time. Yes. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Shut up. Somebody help her praise the Lord. How long has that woman been cooking for you? How long y'all been married? Going on 14 years. 14 years. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, praise God. So the Lord, my, uh, my daughter-in-law was here a while ago. Her name is Amy, and God spoke Amy to me. Say what? That's her name. Too. That's her name? Okay. Well, if I'm guessing, I'm guessing pretty good, aren't I? Hallelujah. See, she's so engulfed. She's absorbing like a sponge the anointing of God. And God's called her to preach. We've ordained two elders here today. I think we've got a third one today that we've ordained to give her the go ye to preach the word of God. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come up here. Let me pray for you, woman. Glory to God. Mm, let me anoint that. I anoint this. I need two kneecaps. Lord, in the name of Jesus, heal this thyroid condition and the kneecaps, Lord. Create new kneecaps in this body. Lord God, for your glory, in Jesus' name, let it be for your glory. In Jesus' name, we call it done, and it is done. Amen. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Glory to God. Yes. You said, was telling about, uh, what was it, a while ago, uh, see the devil snatch that from my Oh, he's a liar. Whatever it was, had to be the truth if I said it. That's all right. You can just stand there. It, it'll come to you. The devil's been tormenting me to death about this. Things will come to my mind to speak for God, and it's gone. Yeah. Well, that's all right. It'll come back to you. Amen. This, this, this. You said you had um, no headache. That's what I was going to testify about. I've uh, never had a headache in my life. I have have allergies, and I also have... Um, Sneezing and all of that, but I, I'm 86, I'll be 87 the second day of May, and I don't know what a headache is. Praise God. I, what a blessing. I had a headache. Amen. Praise the Lord. The keep me but you got it out, though, didn't you? Praise the Lord. Let's, let's give these folks a God bless you, shall we? Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So glad, so glad, so glad, so glad. So glad. I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm glad I was here today. Boy, this has been a special, special time. <laughs> Glory to God. We're going to give you the opportunity to give at this time. 